Right, Sandelier also happens not to be my favorite paints. Um, although, I, I honestly don't know. If you ask me why, I, I kind of feel, looking at these swatches, they're really vibrant and beautiful, so I'm not sure why I wouldn't like them. I guess they didn't have what I loved um, in Daniel Smith at that time, uh, which was that sort of, you know, strong granulation and fun, um, fun colors and things like that. So I guess from that perspective, it probably didn't um, excite me enough. Um, but this particular set with the few extras here, it's um, the Billy Shawl Botanical Watercolor Set which is beautiful, I have to say. And really, I probably should use more of it. So you can totally um, use the yellows and the blues to mix your own greens, obviously. So you need to be a bit um, color theory savvy to be able to use this um, palette. It's not for beginners, probably. Uh, but yeah, I should give them another go. In fact, I'm going to probably leave them out somewhere in my desk so I can give them a another go. Right, Alta New. Now, Alta New came out with a craft grade watercolor quite a few years ago now and I think they sent me this to try and I really, really enjoyed them. The colors were fun for craft grade, really gorgeous convenience colors. I mean, who is not going to love these sort of turquoise colors and some of the greens are quite unique and of course, they're not going to be your, you know, um, amazing pigment quality type of a watercolor. But if you wanted to paint, there's plenty of pinks, plenty of reds, um, blues and purples and neutrals. So everything you need is is here, really. So that's my draw. Now let me move you and show you the um, tube draw. So this is my palette draw. I also have a tube draw where I keep all of my tubes and that is underneath my desk. Okay, so we're back to my desk, which basically this part you saw over there and here, so here is where I'm filming and here right underneath it, there is the draw. And this draw keeps a lot of watercolor, so there you go. Um, so what do we have here? Right at the back, I keep a little tin, which is a bit difficult to open, but here I keep some like extra colors, some colors that I have been sent. Um, so I keep them here. In this corner here, I have the, um, I think it's called the tube wriggler, which is great to uh, you basically hold it this way, you put your tube in that way. So let's do it with this tube. And then you just kind of move it like that and you get this kind of squeezing of the pigment to get the last bits of it. Don't do it to your full pigments because that will make the color kind of create pressure in the tube and make the color come out too fast so only do it if you have like you know half a tube left in there and you just want to squeeze it a bit like here the same thing I would do it as well okay um, let's go over um, here what do I have just an empty little palette that I'm keeping for something then the Daniel Smith mineral marbles and the confetti dot card sets I'm keeping them here there's a little dish which has some of my colors that I repurchased so I'm keeping um, seconds of Mars black and then there is the hematite violet genuine and then I have Rembrandt what is that white opaque white a um, couple of things basically and then we have some palettes over here, which I I organized this draw, by the way, in the beginning of the year. So I really wanted to show this to you, but of course, things have been taking a bit too long. So he says, my own, and I think this is when I was sort of creating these 
just, you know, experimenting little kind of sample colors. Um, so that was this one. Rachel Bath, this was my first handmade purchase, like handmade watercolor purchase that I felt made me fall in love with handmade watercolors. Oops, sorry, that's my phone. Okay, um, so then we have Rembrandt. I labeled this one. So here are these kind of Rembrandt colors that I put a little six color palette. There's another Rembrandt palette. And this is a very specific kind of orange and teals colors. I really like Rembrandt um, watercolors. And then over there, we have got the manuscript um, parts of the fountain pen. I think this is, where is the pen? I'm trying to see, oh yeah, it's right here on my desk in one of those uh, jars. So that's that pan here, which is great for um, doing some fun scripty writing. And on this side, I have my compass. And then underneath it, I have the Caran d'Ache water soluble graphites, which are tinted. And then there are also the regular graphite that comes in B, 3B and 6B, which I really, really like. So these live here. Okay, so let's start now. I'm going to close the drawer a little and show you. Oh, there we go, it's quite heavy. Um, so if we start from here and then kind of go this way. Um, what we have here is just a little drawer or little container of empties. So I like to keep my empties and know the colors that I actually um, used up. Sometimes I use them up because I want to use them up, um, but these are colors that I really, really like. So maybe if I ever wanted to repurchase them or find um, other brand substitutes, um, I know kind of the colors that I use most and I keep them there. Um, as as it will grow, because I have a lot of them here, I will probably put them into a like a jar of some sort to display in my um, in my studio. Here I have just a few random things, so buff titanium, white, and then gold, and I also have the um, the art graph here as well. So these are the colors that didn't kind of work in, in the other color groups. Having them organized like this really makes it easy for me to find the right colors. So if I want a yellow or an orange, I know they would be here. A pink would be there. Greens, turquoises, blues, purples, reds in this container, which you can't see. And then I have some um, ochres and some neutrals and some kind of like greys and blacks. But there is a roasted French ochre, which should be here really. Um, so that's that. And I find it quite, quite easy to go through them. But the easiest way to do your watercolors is actually if you swatch them out all on a piece of um, thick watercolor paper and just keep it in one place so that if you want a specific color you can very quickly flip through them and that's why I have these rings here to kind of keep them um, all organized and I think that would be the best uh, way because I can't quite remember the exact colors of all of them it would be impossible so for that reason, um, yeah, it's it's easy to navigate through my tubes, uh, especially for those colors that I already know. Um, and that is it. So hopefully that gave you a better idea. Let me just see if I can zoom out a bit. There you go. I guess you can see the reds here now as well. So I hope that gave you an idea of what my watercolor stash looks like. And yeah, every artist organize their studio 
in a different way and what's convenient for them and I love watching this sorts of videos and having a little peek in someone's creative space and how they keep things, how they organize things. It's not, you know, anything um, groundbreaking but it's nice and tidy and it really is much better than before. Before I had a completely different system where, um, like I said to you, I had the mini watercolor tubes all in one tin and then I had a larger separate tin. Uh, actually I'll show you now. So this one here, I think my mum brought these chocolates from Austria one day when they were vis visiting us and I absolutely loved the tin. I mean how adorable is this? And you can see it's quite big and it's metal so I kept my um, other watercolor tubes in there but now my Liquitex um, heavy body acrylics live here which is perfect way of uh, utilizing the space and of course this way I can see much better which color is where and it's a lot easier to group them into colors. Alright, I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching and see you soon.